everyone. I'm Wang Zhidan from Tsinghua University. My topic today is generative session-based recommendation. This presentation is divided into four parts. First, let me give you some background information. With the advent of the era of information explosion, we all suffer from information overload and the recommendation system has become an important tool to help us find what we want from a mountain of information. In recent years, session-based recommendation has been widely concerned. It was motivated by the fact that user behaviors are always chronologically correlated. So, the, the goal of session-based recommendation is to predict the current user preference by making use of the historical behaviors. More formally, session-based recommendation aims to learn a probabilistic model F, taking the user and the previously interacted items as input. F will output the probabilities of interacting with the candidate items. And it is learned by maximizing the likelihood of observing the whole dataset. In the past few years, many promising models have been proposed based on different narrow architectures, such as RNN, CNN, and the self-attention mechanism. Actually, these works aim to better design F, as mentioned before. However, few efforts have been devoted to studying the recommendation training data, which is very insufficient. In real-world recommendation scenarios, there can be millions of products in the system, but each user may only interact with very few of them, which makes the recommendation datasets extremely sparse. And the situation can be even worse if one wants to capture the user sequential behavior patterns. Intuitively, the probability of observing a sequence sample is exponentially lowered as the length increases. Meanwhile, Recent narrow recommender models usually contain a large number of parameters. The insufficient training data may pose great challenges for optimizing such heavy models. Therefore, much more high-quality data are needed, and it is this phenomenon that motivated our work. The goal of our work is to enrich the training data, which is orthogonal with existing model-oriented studies. We claim that two critical aspects should be considered for generating high-quality user sequential behaviors. Firstly, we should guarantee the rationality of the sequential data. The generated samples should be reasonable, and can well reflect the real user sequential preferences. However, only focusing on the rationality of the data does not necessarily improve the performance of the recommender models. Take an extreme example. If we generate the data by just copying the original data, the generated sequences are completely reasonable but they are useless for improving the performance, since no additional information can be introduced to broaden the model's views. Therefore, another important aspect is the informativeness, which is often overlooked. The generated samples should be informative enough to enhance the model performance. These two aspects describe the ideal samples from different perspectives. They compensate each other, and neither of them can dominate the other one. In order to generate ideal samples, we design a doubly adversarial narrow network, which is composed of three components. Now, I'll delve into the details of our method. Firstly, 
To make the generated samples more reasonable, we design an adversarial model. To make the generated samples indistinguishable from the original data, we introduce a discriminator, which aims to accurately predict whether a sample is from the original data or generated by the generator pi. While the generator pi tries to confuse the discriminator by imitating the real data, the generator and the discriminator are optimized by such a mini-max gain. However, the user behaviors generated are discrete item IDs, so it is hard to directly define a differentiable sequence generator. To process, we use policy gradient in reinforcement learning to optimize the generator and formulate the generation of user sequential behaviors as a mark of decision process. Specifically, at each step t, the state st is the user and the previously generated items. The action it is the next item to be generated. The reward R is collected at the end of the generation, and is actually the D value of the generated sequence, which indicates the rationality of the data. In order to improve the recommendation performance, we should also guarantee that the generated sequences are informative. Previous works have shown that the samples with larger loss can well challenge the model and bring more inspirations to improve the performance. Motivated by this phenomenon, we also use the loss of the target session-based recommender model as the reward. Combine it with the original reward, we get a new reward to guide the sequence generation. So, we can generate both reasonable and informative samples. Actually, when training the generator pi, the sample loss is maximized to produce informative data. And then, when training the model f with augmented data set, the sample loss will be further minimized, which forms another adversarial training process. In addition to the two points mentioned before, propagation error is also an important issue that cannot be ignored when generating long sequence data. The major challenge lies in that if the formal estimation is incorrect, then the subsequent predictions can be more unreliable. To tackle this problem, we borrow the idea of self-paced learning to learn the generator in an easy to hard manner. Specifically, we first learn the generator to produce shorter sequences, which is relatively easy. Once the generator can produce good samples, we then move to the longer ones, which is more difficult. Existing works in self-paced learning, mainly focus on classification or regression and the supervised learning framework. However, we want to study self-paced learning for generative tasks in the context of reinforcement learning. To fill this gap, we propose a novel objective where G is a, gener a regularizer and it will be gradually increased in the learning process we are maximizing the objective. The key idea of self-paced regularization is let the regularizer G connect with the step index T, so as to control the sequence length. With the increase of G, the generated sequence is gradually allowed to become longer. Now, let me summarize the complete learning procedure of our method. The target session-based recommender model F is firstly pre-trained based on the original dataset, and then the generator pi is optimized through the method described earlier, and then leveraged to generate new samples. At last, 
The target model F is retrained based on union between the generated and original data sets. Now, I'd like to demonstrate the experimental performance of our method. We base our experiments on three real-world data sets, and we compare our model with these baselines including non-session-based models, session-based models, and a recent proposed data augmentation method for sequential recommendation. The results of comparison is demonstrated in this table. We can see session-based recommender models can achieve better performance than non-session-based ones, which manifests that the atom sequential correlations are significant for user behaviors. Then, in most cases, applying our framework on session-based recommender models can enhance the performance, which validates the effectiveness of our proposed method. If we consider the performance improvement per dataset, it is interesting to see that the performance improvement on movilence is not that large as compared with the other datasets. We speculate that the other datasets are much sparser than movilence. The generated samples are introduced more, can introduce more valuable signals for the original data and thus better improve the performance. Finally, CDASR can lead to improved performance comparing with NARM, but applying our appro approach on NARM can achieve better performance, which further confirms the superiority of our method. In order to study the contributions of the three components for the final performance, we compare our framework with its three variants and each variant removes one component. We also compare our models with three straightforward baselines, where we generate new samples by adding, removing, and replacing one atom at a random position of the original sequences. The results on movilence dataset is shown in this figure. We can see the simple methods like same adding same removing and same replacing do not perform well due to the lack of principled design to constrain the generated sequence. The final performance of DSP would reduce if we remove the rationality constraint or informativeness constraint, which manifests that the requirements of rationality and informativeness are both important. Moreover, Comparing with DASP, the lowered performance of DASP minus S verifies the effectiveness of our idea on regularizing the training samples, which also evidence the potential of self-paced learning for the generative sample task and the reinforcement learning. In case studies, we present two cases to illustrate the generated sequences for movilence data. We can see the generated sequences are generally reasonable. For example, the movies in the first sequence are all comedy films, while the movies in the second sequence are all of action type. In order to see whether the sequential patterns in these samples are informative, we count how many times that each two-order sequential pattern appears in the original data. From the results, we can see these patterns are mostly not covered by the original data, which demonstrates that our model can generate both reasonable and informative samples. In conclusion, we push the boundary of session-based recommendation from the perspective of enriching the training data. Both rationality and informativeness are considered when generating user sequential behaviors. And we propose a novel self-paced regularization to stable the training process. 
Extensive experiments demonstrate that our framework is effective on the mainstream session-based recommender models. That's all. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much uh, uh, the, uh, for the video. So the presenter is here. Uh, are there any questions or feedback? Okay, so I do have, uh, yeah, we have uh, two minutes. Um, in the uh, you ablation study, uh, was very, very interesting. Uh, I think you really show uh, the different components of the approach and uh, the impact of it. Um, it was done under movie lens. And before, when you were talking about uh, the various results on the various data sets, uh, the increase in performance was the lowest on the, on the movie lens, if, if I remember correctly. Um, did you do also the ablation study on the other data sets where there was quite a much bigger increase in performance? I don't know if you're able to say something uh, around this. Hello, can you hear me? We can hear you, thank you. Uh, thank you for your question. Uh, yes, I do. Uh, implement our uh, ablation on other data sets and the results uh, is the same as the movie lens. So I, uh, for the space limitation, I only represent the uh, uh, movie lens data, the, the results of the movie lens data. Uh, Was and it's interesting uh, that the self-paced regularizer Mm, indeed, uh, uh, improve our uh, think, uh, improve our uh, performance. Okay. Okay. No, thank you. Because I thought that was very, very interesting to 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 look uh, to to uh, uh, to to relate those. So 